Welcome back to the Grill Mark Co. Cooking Channel. My name is Mark Ashby. I am the grillionaire, the internet's favorite barbecue expert. And today and tomorrow, we're gonna be filming a video, kind of overnight, not really filming overnight, but we're gonna be doing a cook for the local fire department in the town that I live in. And what's even better is you're not just gonna see me in this video, thank God you're gonna see my kids in this video too because they're gonna be helping me prepare the pork butts that we got from Heritage Farms, the brisket that we got donated, everything all together to take to this fire department, to thank them for what they do in our community, and just to share with my family how community is done. Let's get started. Now in this cook, we're gonna be going out to the grilling deck and we're gonna be using my Monument Grills pellet smoker to cook these two beautiful butts from Cheshire or from Heritage Farms, the Cheshire pork that is selective breeding, some of the best, and I mean the best pork you can get. Make sure to go to buypork.com to get more of that. They donated this. And we also have a donated brisket as well, a whole packer that we're gonna be putting on the top shelf on that pellet smoker. Then we're gonna be going to our pit barrel in the morning and cooking two racks of St. Louis ribs that we also got from Heritage Farms of the Cheshire Pork. It's gonna be a lot of general barbecue cooking, pork butts, briskets, sausage, ribs, all kinds of stuff that we got going on. But first, we gotta prep the meat. First thing we're gonna prepare is the brisket because this is gonna take the most time and most attention because we gotta carve out all this really not useful fat that you see right here. Now this is a prime USDA prime brisket and uh, we're just gonna trim this up as best we can and this is going on the top shelf of the Monument Grill 860 30, excuse me. So we're just gonna cut off all the sinew, all the silver skin, that is not useful, and set that aside. All fat, not useful. So we trimmed off a lot of the bottom part here, got a lot of that nasty fat out that's not gonna render down, it's not gonna be anything good. But you can see how much fat. We wanna get about a quarter inch, maybe that inch, that much right there. So we gotta cut off all that. So. Let's do that now. So we took all this fat off here and we have a nice decent layer on the top here and we took a lot of it out here, you know, cause this fat doesn't render. So we took a lot of it out. We probably took around, I don't know, five, six pounds of fat, which I'm gonna render down and make some beef tallow later. But I'm gonna pull out those pork butts next. We're gonna cut into those and we're gonna trim them back just a little bit as well and then we're going to use mustard as a binder and uh, then we're gonna get the kids involved and let them decorate it with all these flavorings that we have from Cosmo Q and Texas Brew and Barbecue here. Next we have these pork butts and this is from Heritage Farms, it's Cheshire Pork and I reached out to them, I have a good relationship with them over the years and I said, hey guys, I'm doing this video for some firemen, would you guys be willing to donate some, uh, some pork for this cause that I'm doing? And they said, what do you need? So they sent me these two pork butts and two racks of St. Louis ribs, which we'll cook tomorrow in the pit barrel. But uh, just check out how good this pork is. First of all, it has that nice cap, but look at all the beautiful striations of fat. This is how you know, this is like the Wagyu of pork, okay? It is flavorful, it is selective breeding from them. And uh, make sure you go to buypork.com to order some Cheshire pork. They can ship anywhere in the continental US and uh, they helped us out big time to feed these local firemen. I'm really excited about that. So make sure you go check them out. We took these out of the package and they're absolutely gorgeous. I am so thankful to Heritage Farms for donating this. All we're gonna do, there is no trimming that needs to be done. We're just gonna be doing a checker pattern to make sure, and we're doing it about, you know, a quarter inch thick, 
just to make sure that that flavoring gets inside the meat a little bit because we all know that it doesn't necessarily, the rubs don't get inside the meat until you're done and you sprinkle a little on. So we're just doing that crisscross pattern here to get that flavor a little bit deeper. So guys, I'm gonna put mustard all over this and it's your job to get all that mustard all over this whole pork butt, okay? Okay. So you're gonna take your gloves. Yeah, it's a pork butt. Yeah, it's okay to say butt. <laughs> yeah, no, it's silly, isn't it? Yeah. But it's not your butt like you sit on. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's a different part. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, spread it, go. Okay. Get up, get in there, get in the deep part. My hands yeah. will get all dirty in there. Cooper, you have what? Huge. I never good. tried mustard before and I only have ketchup so I'm gonna... Okay, well, we're not gonna try the mustard now. Okay. Here we go again. Now, now we're gonna get the bottom. Huh? Spread it all on the sides, on the bottom. Get it all. Go, Presley. Don't touch your face. Spread, 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 spread. Rubby, rubber, rubber. Is this a brain? No, it's a pork butt. It's a muscle. Good job, guys. Now we gotta add the seasonings next. Uh, okay, so this is fire red, fire yellow of the sun. And this is mystery <laughs> underwear. <laughs> and this is called mystery football underwear. Are you guys excited? Now we're going to put the rubs on and we have the rubs from Cosmo Q, which I use a lot. And then we have the one from Texas Brew and Barbecue too. So and his nickname is foot, mystery football fire underwear. Okay, okay. So we're gonna season two different ones. We have this one, which is gonna be a little bit sweeter with sweet honey pecan and the honey killer bee. And this one's gonna be a little bit saltier, a little savory, a little spicy because we have the dirty bird sriracha and the uh, pig skin from Texas Brew and Barbecue. Shake as up. much as we want? As much as you want. Shake it. Is this gonna be sweet? Break one on. Don't touch this. Oh, it's fine. It's, mm -hmm. it's gonna be empty by the time we're done. Hang on, hang on. We're gonna get dirty again for a second, okay? Okay. I need you to take your hands and pat it down. Pat it down. Okay. Yeah. Go, okay. <laughs> right. That's why. All right. It's fine. It's fine. There you go. Take it all over, all over. Oh. We're out of this one, so let's use the other one. Yeah. We got the honey pecan next. Okay, yeah. we're gonna put it all over this too, and we're gonna put it on the bottom again too. Just like that. Okay. There you go. That's good. All right, pat away. Pat, pat, pat. pat. You want to know what we're doing right now? No! We're rubbing a butt. Ew! <laughs> Sprinkle it on. This is the Dirty Bird Sriracha next. Get it all over it. This is spicy. Shake it. Yeah, it's a, little, it's a little spicy. Shake it on, shake it on. This is a good peppery blend. All over, all over. <laughs> oh. There you go, Cooper. Pat my butt, pat in the butt, pat in the butt <laughs> of a big. All right, now we're using the Texas Brew and Barbecue Pig Skin. Put it on. Oh, but it smells bad. You're fine, Cooper. All right, pat it down. Our brisket, okay, and this is gonna go on the top shelf of the cooker. So we're gonna use a binder again. This is called a binder. This helps all that rub that we use stick to it. All right, put, go crazy. Go crazy? Go crazy. Yes, go crazy. Over, all over. Yeah. Is this still a butt? No, this is not a butt. Don't eat it. That's raw meat, don't eat it. Now we're gonna use our Cosmo Q cow cover as the base layer. So Carson, go crazy. There you go. All over, all over. All right, pat it on. Uh, pat it good. Here, here, lift that up, Coop. Get some of that in there. There you go, pat it in. We, we can't even see the mustard. I can't even see the mustard. Let's do the Texas Brew and Barbecue. Who's gonna do this one? Do you, I'll do, you wanna do it too? All right, go crazy. I'll be fine with it. It's gonna be the saltiest brisket ever. Dad, has there been a really salty brisket before? I'm sure there has, son. There you go. There you go, good. Good technique. I'm doing the scallops on the fries massage. Okay. Guys, guys, we're doing this for who? Who are we doing this for? The firefighters! Right, and so we're doing this because we want to say what to them? Thank, thank you! you. Right. We want to thank them for protecting us. Keep 
keeping us safe from fires, helping us and helping the community. All right, pat it on, Brad. Saving cats from trees. Saving cats from trees. And All right, good job, guys. So we're gonna put this on later tonight, and then we're gonna let it cook overnight. Does that sound fun? Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for your help. So this is the beauty that we will be cooking the brisket and the pork butts on. I have measured this out already. The pork butts are gonna go on the bottom here and the brisket is gonna lay across the top right here. Now, come on over here. We're gonna set this to a low setting. We turn on the power and we're gonna set it to smoke. I don't know exactly what temperature that is on the inside of the chamber here, but in about five minutes, we're gonna put the pork butts and the brisket on and we're gonna start the cook for the firemen tonight. Now, another thing we're gonna be using for this video is I've got two meat sticks. I got the new meat stick four and I got the meat stick X. And we're gonna be using these in the pork butts and I'm gonna be using the, the probe that comes with the monument grill that plugs directly in so I can keep an eye on the temperature in the brisket with this. We've got about almost 40 pounds of meat, 30, 40 pounds of meat going on. So first we got our sweet pork butt that the kids went crazy on. That'll slide in this way. Then we have the spicy pork butt right here. That again, the kids went crazy on. And I'll slide in right there. Just enough room. And then we've got this beautiful beautiful brisket, which we will put right on top, just like that. Now, every 30 minutes or so, I am gonna come and spritz these with some Meat Sweats uh, hog wash and bull spritz. So, I'm gonna be using both of those to spritz these to get make sure that they get an amazing barking color on this. Good morning, it is about 5.30 in the morning. The butts and the brisket have been cooking overnight in the pellet grill. And uh, let's take a look at them. We're about to put the pork butts in some aluminum foil pans and we're gonna let them braise in some beer uh, and put it back on the smoker until they reach an internal temperature of 203 and then we'll pull. But let's take a look at everything, see how it looks. I'm doing this by myself, so it might be a little different. There's a gorgeous brisket. Look at that. Got. and we're gonna braise each of those pork butts inside one of these aluminum pans down here on uh, my little table you can see uh, that's my light <laughs> it's great being a one-man shadow it's great being a one-man uh, job here but we're gonna braise them in here wrap them in aluminum foil and throw them back on the smoker and let them come into that internal temperature of 203 degrees and that's where we pull it so the brisket needs just a little bit longer. It's kind of hit that stall at 165. So in about 10 or 15 minutes, uh, we're gonna wrap that in some butcher paper and then throw it right back on top of that shelf. In case you're wondering, no, I don't wear a hat to bed. I'm just dedicated to the process. So I figured we would skip the whole seasoning the ribs part because we've already got a ton of video seasoning with the pork butt and the uh, brisket, but I wanna show you at least what I did with it. On one rack of ribs, we have just a dirty bird rub with a mustard binder. And then we're going Texas style with the other one with just an SPG rub and a mustard binder. So we are about to do the rib cook now, which we are gonna hang them on the pit barrel cooking here. We gotta get it fired up. We got some charcoal loaded. I got it loaded in the chimney here, get it fired up. And then we're gonna hang those ribs and they should cook three, four hours and then we'll let them rest for a minute and chop them up. All right, follow me, we're gonna dump these we got 30 bricks lit. And that's gonna be just enough. Now we're gonna set in the rebar and I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes to come up to temperature, which is usually about 275. And that rebar helps it circulate. 
I'm gonna hang one rack from each uh, from each rebar bar. Texas style, dirty bird. Really simple how this works. I'm slide right on there, right over the coals. And this one on this rack here, right over the coals. We'll check back in about two, three hours. May come back and spritz it with some meat sweats uh, hogwash here. I did that with the port butts. I also use their bull spritz on the on the brisket as well. So this stuff is amazing. I bought this, they didn't send it to me, but check out the meat spritz guys. And we'll see you in a few hours. So these butts and briskets have been going both for about 12-ish, maybe a little longer hours. The brisket is done. So now we have to take it out and we're gonna let it rest tightly and securely in there. And we're not gonna slice that for probably, I don't know, five or six hours. So all we have left now is the pork butts. They're almost done. And we'll let those cook for another 30, 40 minutes and then we'll throw those in the oven and just let them warm up uh, and rest for about an hour to two hours. And then we'll pull them apart. 15 hours, this Monument Grill has gone nonstop. Let's go ahead and cut her off because we are done. Now, come here, check this out. See how tender, well, it's gonna be hard to tell, but that just goes right in. can't get much better than that. So we're gonna place them on this pan and we're gonna put them in the oven and let them rest for about two hours uh, and then we'll shred into it. So. so here are the two pork butts. They've been resting about an hour and a half and I mean, this is probably some of the best pork butts I've ever done. Bone, this is the sweet one. Bone just slides right out. Nothing on there. Same thing here. Well, I'm just slide. Right. And also, if you take a look inside, you can see I, I did one beer in each one. So there is a little beer, but all the juice from in there. And if we just take a look, I mean, first of all, look how easily, look at that smoke ring. Look at that. Gorgeous color. We're gonna shred these up. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of our dry rub with the sweet one. And the spicy one over here with some Dirty Bird Sriracha. And I'm just gonna sprinkle that on there to add a little more flavor that gets inside the uh, pork when we're done shredding it. But look how easy, look how easy that shreds. Good. The one thing people often do is they have the meat claws that separate it. I had some tongs set aside over here. I was gonna use that, but you can also take the bone and just dig right in. This is just shredding. <laughs> This is so good. And that's just perfect pulled pork. Juicy. We have this pulled pork pulled perfectly. Now we're just gonna add some of this. This is gonna absorb some of that moisture in there, but also give it some of that sweet flavor that we have on the inside as well. And just mix that in there. Do as much or as little as you want. The brisket has been resting, I think, what, three hours, something like that. So let's take a look. First reveal. Look at that beautiful bark. We got the jiggle test going. Lots of juices. Let's slice into this. Tell me, is it juicy enough? So we've cut a piece out here, and we're doing the brisket bin test. It bends beautifully. Pulls apart easily on its own too. So we're gonna slice this up and uh, put it in the pan here and put it in the warmer. All right, so we've cut this up into one inch cubes. We got our burnt ends here. We're gonna put them in the foil pan and then we're gonna pour some sauce all over them put them back on the pellet grill for about another 30 minutes or so just to let them render down a little more and have that sauce all over it. For this I'm using Cosmo Q Sweet Smoke because 
That is some of my favorite. I want to share it with these firemen. All right, so we got our two racks of ribs. I got some sausage on here as well. That's good. A lot of smoke. Tempt them. They're at about 196. But look at how beautifully that cooked. We have just a little bit of pull away right up here at the top. Great crust. So let's get these inside, let them rest for about 10 minutes, and then chop them up. All right, so these have been resting. We put a little rib glaze on it so you can see the nice shininess of it. Uh, this one right here, which is the Texas one, the salt, pepper, garlic, got a little bit burnt on the end. So we're just gonna cut these up but rib by rib. I'm gonna cut these up rib by rib and then put them in the pan. All right, guys, where, uh, where are we going? What are we taking them? Yeah. What kind of food? Mark from our Kofu! Pick books. Sweet. Well, different kinds. And what are you going to take Brisket. Ribs. Ribs. All right. Get your rain power! What do we say to the firemen? Thank you!